Tom Hartman here on the news. You need to know this. Yesterday, President Obama spoke at Knox College in Illinois about his vision for the American economy. Throughout his speech, the president highlighted facts, like how middle-class Americans are struggling to survive, while CEO pay and earnings for the top 1% of Americans have skyrocketed. The essence of the president's speech was that it's time to get away from the failed economic ideas of the past 30 years, like Reaganomics and trickle-down economics, and instead look to the days of the Great Society and the New Deal to boost our economy. Right now, Republicans in Washington are hacking away at the very programs that could help this nation recover and that would make the middle class strong and stable once again. In yesterday's speech, the president proposed increases in infrastructure spending, more investments in education, and continued work to make health care affordable in America. Unfortunately, Republicans refuse to address this nation's infrastructure woes. They don't understand the value of a good education, and they voted about 40 times to repeal Obamacare, which makes health care more affordable in America. But why are they doing this? Why are Republicans standing by the failed policies of Reaganomics, trickle-down economics, supply-side economics, and the voodoo economics of the Reagan revolution? It's because the Republican Party is a cult. Scientists tell us that cult leaders pretty much always do the same thing to their members. Cult leaders put their members in physically or emotionally distressing situations to soften them up. Cult leaders reduce complex problems to bumper stickers, and they demand loyalty to the cult and core ideas of the founder and core ideas of the cult. Cult leaders spoon feed information to their members in a way that always makes them look good and everyone else look bad. Our president is fighting an uphill battle to restore vital programs that could put Americans back to work, rebuild our crumbling infrastructure, and stimulate our struggling economy. For the sake of our nation, let's hope he can defeat the cult and bring back the great society by enacting a new New Deal. In screwed news, according to TEPCO workers in Japan, more steam has been reported at Fukushima nuclear reactor number three. Workers noticed the steam coming out of the very same area it was leaking from last week. They say the problem is on the fifth floor of the plant where reactor number three is, right next to a pool storing machinery. The roof of reactors number three was blown off during a hydrogen explosion a few days after the 2011 nuclear meltdown and is still too dangerous for anyone to go near it. Meanwhile, strong earthquakes are occurring around the plant again, leaving Japanese residents and people around the world watching the situation closely. Let's just say, no nukes. In the best of the rest of the news, in the wake of the George Zimmerman verdict, a Jefferson County, Alabama lawmaker wants to change that state's stand your ground, shoot first law, so it won't let the next George Zimmerman get off for taking another life. Representative America Coleman Evans says that under her bill, a person could not use stand your ground, shoot first if they initially pursued another person engaged in a lawful activity and the pursuit resulted in a confrontation. While Coleman Evans's bill is a good start, many people around our nation would like to see stand your ground, shoot first laws repealed entirely. Yesterday, labor and human rights leaders asked for negotiations with Vietnam and the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the TPP, to be suspended. They want talks delayed until trading partners can provide basic labor, environmental, and human rights standards. Teamsters President James P. Hoffa said President Obama must hold Vietnam accountable for its record on worker and human rights before America rewards that country with greater trading privileges. A new report details a number of worker abuses in Vietnam. They include forced labor, child labor, and gender discrimination. Substandard wages and slave labor conditions make it impossible for American workers to compete with jobs in other nations. Before other trade agreements, pro-corporate groups like the Chamber of Commerce said exports and jobs would blossom, but it didn't happen. Just like when NAFTA was passed, the TPP will reduce wages and suck jobs away from American workers. When will our elected leaders ever learn? And finally, a few days ago, NSA Director Keith Alexander met privately with Democratic and Republican House lawmakers. Alexander railed against a Republican-proposed amendment to the Defense Appropriations Bill, which would have cut off funding for the NSA's vast phone data collection program. The amendment was authored by Congressman Justin Amish, the Libertarian Republican from Michigan, and co-sponsored by Liberal Michigan Democratic Congressman John Conyers. 
Meanwhile, Senator Ron Wyden of Oregon, one of the staunchest critics of the NSA's surveillance programs, spoke out against government surveillance Tuesday at the Center for American Progress. Despite the best efforts of Representative Conyers, Senator Wyden, and others, the Republican-controlled House of Representatives voted to continue funding the surveillance program. And so our fight for privacy rights continues. And that's the way it is today, Thursday, July 25th, 2013. I'm Tom Hartman on the news.